Found in Salisbury Plain, England, about 13 kilometers north of Salisbury, lies one of the world's most recognizable megaliths, Stonehenge. This remarkable prehistoric monument is known all over the planet as one of the oldest and most mysterious Neolithic finds of recent history. Long have we pondered over its origins, what it was made for, and how it got there in the first place. But did you know that America may have its very own Stonehenge, hidden in the depths of Lake Michigan? Known more commonly as the Grand Traverse Bay Stones, a cluster of underwater rock formations may just very well hold the secret to understanding the forgotten lives of prehistoric hunting communities and how they survived all those thousands of years ago. This discovery has been the center of much debate and intrigue among scientists, archaeologists, historians, and the public as to the real meaning and origin of the rock formations. Some believe them to be purely geological formations, while others argue that the structure is man-made and even older than the original Stonehenge monument. Some have even gone as far to suggest that the structure was created by the supernatural or even extraterrestrial beings. Sorry to leave you hanging, but we regret to inform you that the Grand Traverse Bay stones were not made by aliens. But someone built it, right? Before we take a deep dive into look into this underwater site, often referred to as America's Stonehenge or Lake Michigan Stonehenge, let's take a look at what we know about the actual Stonehenge. The original Stonehenge is estimated to have been built around 5,000 years ago, with the stone circle being built in several stages. Primitive tools, possibly made from deer antlers, were used to create the ditch and bank that the stones now stand on, as well as wooden structures, before the larger stones were placed in the ground. Over time, the layout of Stonehenge changed during its construction, with the famous heel stone and avenue being created over the course of several hundred years, the horseshoe arrangement being one of its most distinctive features. Archaeologists believe it to have been used for ceremonious purposes and as a burial ground, having located several human remains in the area. In total, 50 bodies have been buried at Stonehenge, all buried within the Neolithic and Early Bronze Age periods, providing evidence that this site was a religious and ceremonious one. Scientists have also theorized that the layout was possibly formed to align with movements of the sun and the moon, which is why the equinox and solstice are often celebrated there. It is also believed to have taken 1,500 hundred years to have been completed. Quite similar in formation to Stonehenge, 12 meters beneath the surface of Lake Michigan lies a circular formation of rocks, first discovered in 2007 by a team of researchers from Northwestern Michigan College's Great Lakes Exploration Group. The team was originally searching for shipwreck remains, but stumbled across this fascinating circle of stones using sonar scanning equipment. The most significant of the stones had markings of what seemed to be carvings depicting a mastodon a long-extinct distant relative of the elephant and of the mammoth. These types of markings are also known as petroglyphs. If indeed this is man-made, the petroglyphs could be at least 10,000 years old, making it one of the oldest known prehistoric discoveries of modern times. Based on the known water levels in that area at the point of the last ice age, many believe that this proves its age to be well over 10,000 years old. When you see it in the water, you're tempted to say this is absolutely real, but that's what we need the experts to come in and verify," said Dr. Mark Holly, an underwater archaeologist who was on the scene. Dr. Mark Holly contacted the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa tribes of Native Americans, who decided that to keep the site secure, the location should be kept as a closely guarded secret in order to honor their ancestors and to keep the site safe. Could there be more to these structures than meets the eye? Some scientists are convinced that these markings are man-made and could just be naturally created by the environment. Daniel Fisher, a leading paleontologist and museum curator, has his doubts, saying that mastodons aren't known to have ventured into northern Michigan. But it's not to say that humans who had seen these majestic beasts not wandered that way. Fisher also added, the difficulty I saw was that the features of what's interpreted as an engraving were so subtle, and they're not the only thing on the boulder. Since this interview, though, a mammoth had been found in a farmer's field in Michigan in 2015, though mammoths are still different from a mastodon. To add on to the possible explanation of the underwater stones is that they could have been marked by the movement of glaciers in the last ice age, which would explain why the markings are so subtle. Others have argued, though, that the stones seem too intentionally placed and could have been used for ceremonies and religious purposes, 
such as the ones at Stonehenge. Other stone monuments have been found in Michigan, as well as other sites with petroglyphs, so it stands to reason that the structure isn't entirely out of place. As previously mentioned, one of the more outlandish theories suggests that this discovery is potentially linked to extraterrestrials. Michigan isn't only known for its Great Lakes, but also its many UFO sightings that have been ever so common across the state, with some people having seen strange lights and objects in the sky, particularly around Lake Huron. In late 1994, police officers reported sightings of triangular objects hovering right above Lake Michigan itself. Some have likened the layout of the stones to crop circles. Within the arrangement of stones, there are two circles, the largest boulder being slightly egg-shaped. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> In all seriousness, back on Earth, and indeed under the water, scientists still scratch their heads in bewilderment over where these stones came from and what they actually mean if they indeed are man-made. Unfortunately, very little further information has been made readily available to the public, and no further evidence has been confirmed by any archaeological or scientific officials. Because of this, the true origin of this spectacle is yet to be discovered, and whether or not this site actually is of human origin or not, We'll have yet to find out. However, one thing is for certain. The discovery of this site reminds us that there still may be many fascinating historical monuments, such as this one, that are yet to be discovered. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can help support a smaller channel like ours. Also, please make sure to smash the absolute crap out of that bell button so you can get notifications on our latest videos and updates for our upcoming Ancient Coin giveaways that we will start doing once we reach 5,000 subscribers. In the meantime, though, we'll see you next time, only on Amateur Archaeology.